हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टॉप स्कॉलर्स द स्मार्ट लर्निंग ऐप टुडे वी विल हैव अ डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस फॉर नीट इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ बायोलॉजी व्हिच अमंग द फॉलोइंग टेस्ट इज यूज्ड टू कंफर्म निमोनिया निमोनिया इज अ कंडीशन वेयर द लंग्स आर फिल्ड विद fluids common causative agent for this conditions might be bacteria or viruses one agent is salmonella okay now let us have a look on the options that are provided to us option a is smear test option b we are having elisa option c is vidal test and the last option d is urine test over here this smear test is used for cervical testing okay elisa we are using very popularly for detecting the antibodies against hiv virus okay this urine test is recommended when the patient is suffering from diabetes or is suspected to have kidney related disorders okay now what do you know about this vidal test okay so there is a causative agent that is salmonella which is causing pneumonia okay this vidal test is one of the method that is used to make a presumptive diagnosis of enteric fever okay which is also known as typhoid fever you should also mark these details okay so the causative agent is salmonella which is usually transmitted through contaminated food or water okay and these are contaminated with fecal matter now what are the symptoms the symptoms might be high fever fatigue abdominal pain diarrhea the patient might also have the constipation weight loss and a rash which is known as rose spots okay so the vidal test is actually having the preparation of antibodies and the causative agent that is salmonella which might be present in the patient's serum okay is having the antigens thus when we are mixing the serum with these antibodies if there is agglutination that means the antigen and antibodies have reacted okay so that will give us a positive result for the vidal test thus the correct answer for this question is option c which of the following is a derived protein okay for this question to answer you must know what do we mean by protein okay now let us have a look on the options that are given to us option a is peptones we have option b that is albumin we have option c that is legumelin and the last option d is hemoglobin okay so over here you need to find out which of these protein is actually a derived protein okay over here if you will see this peptones are derived protein how are we getting the peptones that should be a question that comes to the mind so these peptones are soluble mixtures of polypeptides and amino acids you might know proteins are made up of amino acids right and these peptones are the soluble mixtures of polypeptides the peptide is the bond between two amino acids that is joining the two adjacent amino acids okay so peptones are soluble mixtures of polypeptides that are formed from the hydrolysis of animal and plant proteins okay so we will be having the animal and plant proteins and these are undergoing the hydrolysis process and then we are getting peptones hence these are the derived proteins the other proteins provided to you in the options were albumin and legumelin now these are simple proteins albumin is found in our serum also okay and this legumelin is the albumin which is found in leguminous plants okay these are simple proteins and hence they should not be included in derived protein group okay the last option provided was of hemoglobin right now this is a conjugated protein because 
you have the combination of the globin protein along with a prosthetic group. What do you mean by a prosthetic group? It is a group which is tightly held by the protein. Okay, so the prosthetic group in case of hemoglobin is heme. Okay, so thus it is consisting of two components, the protein component and the prosthetic group. Hence, it is referred to as conjugated protein. You must remember all these details so as to answer the potential questions which come in the actual examination. Okay. So, the correct answer for this question becomes option A. The match the column type of question. In first column, we are provided with the epithelial tissue and the next column has the characteristic. We need to match the epithelial tissue with the correct characteristics. Okay. So, the first one given is squamous epithelium. Then we have cuboidal epithelial tissue. Then C is columnar epithelial tissue. And the last one is ciliated epithelial tissue. So, in the options, you will be provided with different combinations and you need to choose the correct matched pairs. Okay. Over here, the squamous epithelium is single thin layer of flattened cells. Okay with irregular boundaries. So, it is also known as simple squamous epithelium. Then we have cuboidal epithelium as the name suggests these are cube like cells. So, a single layer of cube like cells. This single layer is important okay? because we have stratified epithelium also wherein many layers or multi layers are present. That is why keep a note to include the single layer word. Okay? Then we have columnar epithelium and again as the name suggests it is like columns. So, it is single layer of tall and slender cells. Then last one ciliated. These are having ciliated or uh, hair like structures on the top. So, these are involved in moving the particles or mucus in specific direction over the epithelium. Let us have a look on the image over here you can see these are the cilia. So, these are the ciliated simple epithelium. Okay. Over here we have simple cuboidal. You can see cube like cells are arranged in single layer. These are simple squamous epithelium. The boundaries you can see those are irregular. Okay. Over here there are simple columnar epithelium. These are column like cells which are arranged in a single layer. And over here, we were talking about stratified squamous epithelium, right? You can see many layers are present. These are strat, okay? So, keep a note that stratified squamous epithelium has multi layers and others are having single layer, okay? And uh, along with the structure and characteristic of the epithelial tissue, you should also know where the specific epithelial tissue is found. Okay, where is this ciliated epithelium is found? Where do we have the presence of stratified squamous epithelium and so on and so forth? So that you will be prepared for your exam more thoroughly. Okay, so those combinations are present in option C, wherein A is matched with 3, then we have 4, 2, and 1. Okay, so option C is the correct answer for this question. An assertion and reason type of question. So, the statements are provided in assertion and reason. We need to find out whether the statements are true or false. And then also, if the reason correctly justifies the assertion statement or not. Okay. So, the assertion statement is, all vertebrates are chordates, but all chordates are not vertebrates. Okay. So, this statement is actually true. We will see in some moment. Let us have a look on the reason statement first. The members of subphylum vertebrata possesses notochord during the embryonic period which is then replaced by cartilaginous or bony vertebral column in the adult. Now, this assertion and reason both statement are true and this reason also justifies the assertion statement. Let us have a look on the options. Option A will say that the assertion and reason are true and reason justifies assertion. Option B, both are true, but reason is not justifying the assertion. 
Option C we have that assertion is false, reason is true. Last option D, assertion and reason both are false. So over here the correct answer is option A. Let us have a look. So over here you will see this is the embryo stage and this is the adult stage. Okay. In embryo, this is the presence of notochord. This notochord is present in embryonic stage. Then as the organism develops, this notochord is then replaced by cartilaginous or bony vertebral column. Now this one is the vertebral column that is evident in adult organism. Okay. So this statement now, all vertebrates are chordates. Chordates are organisms which are having the presence of notochord in some region, okay, in some region or in some part of their lifetime. So, these vertebrates which are having vertebral column are actually deriving it from notochord itself, right. Hence, all vertebrates are chordates, but all chordates are not vertebrates. The vice versa is not true because for any chordate, to become vertebrate, it should have this vertebral column. Otherwise, it is just a chordate, not vertebrate. Okay. So, in chordates, we have three subphylum, which is cephalochordata, urochordata, and third one is vertebrata. Okay. So, cephalochordata and urochordata member organisms are not vertebrates, which is the perfect example. So, assertion statement is true and this reason statement is also true. Hence, we will say option A is the correct answer for our question. Which statement from the following is false about beekeeping? So, beekeeping is also known as apiculture and we need to find out the false statement. Keep that in mind while answering any question, what you are asked. Okay. Let us have a look on the options. Option A is Beekeeping or apiculture is the maintenance of hives of honeybees for the production of honey. This statement is true, right? We are doing this beekeeping because honey is of commercial importance. It is having many medicinal purposes also, okay? So, A statement is true. We need to find out the false one. Option B, we are having beekeeping can be practiced in any area where there are sufficient bee pastures of some wild shrubs there should be fruit orchards and cultivated crops. So, this is also true. Beekeeping is actually very easy if the required conditions are met. Okay. Option C, bees are pollinators of many crop species such as sunflower. Yes, sunflower does have the pollinator as honeybee. But over here, we are provided with cypresses, junipers and phylodendron. These three are non-flowering plants. So, if we don't have the flowers itself, then how come honeybees will be the pollinators? Hence, this statement is incorrect because of these three names. Up to here, the statement was correct. Option D, let us have a look. This keeping beehives in crop fields during flowering period increases pollination efficiency. Yes, when the plants are flowering, then it is the best time for doing the beekeeping business, right? Because the honeybees are dependent on flowers only. And this will improve the yield beneficial both from the point of view of crop yield as well as honey yield. More the number of pollinators, more is the crop spreading, right? So, the crop yield will also increase and the honey yield will also increase. So, option D is also correct. The only incorrect statement is option C. Let us have a look over here that bees are the pollinators of many crop species such as sunflower, brassica, apple and pears. These cypresses, junipers and phylodendron are non-flowering plants. Hence, these three will not be having honeybee as their pollinators. Okay. Thus, the incorrect statement is option C. Therefore, it becomes the correct answer for our question since we were supposed to find out the false statement. Okay.